Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Bishop Eden, to our Redemptorist Oratory, for our usual Thursday message. Um, I'm trying to reinstate Thursday as my sort of free day, but anyway, it, I think it's important that we keep up this message. So just a, a short message today to keep you in touch with what's going on. Um, one of the things that I found really inspiring was just listening to Father Andrew speaking at yesterday's Mass. We got to that bit of St. Paul's letter to the Romans, the latter part of chapter 8. Do you remember Paul talks about the whole of creation kind of groaning and giving birth? Um, and then he goes on to say, likewise, when we cannot find words to pray properly, the Spirit expresses our plea in a way that can never be put into words. I find that utterly consoling that when I'm struggling with all the bits and pieces in life and kind of wondering what to say to the Lord and trying to listen to what he's saying to me, to just to know that God's spirit is already expressing my plea. If I can just make that act of faith that I want to be in touch with the Lord and then try to be attentive and to live in the present moment. It, it's quite difficult to do that, um, but it's one of the great things that the spiritual writers tell us to do. Um, and there is a bit of a challenge in that because in any uh, society, in any group, uh, it's good to be in the present moment. Uh, and I talked to you about uh, little um, Raducana, the, the wonderful tennis player, about how she, Emma, how she kind of said she, she stays in the moment when she's playing tennis. So it's a great gift if you can do it. Uh, but of course, to become a tennis player like that, you have to do an awful lot of practice and preparation. Uh, and in any society, in any group, we do have to plan, plan for the future. And indeed, our wonderful administrator down the road, uh, Anne O'Neill, was talking to me the other day. She said, you know, perhaps we ought to sit down and talk about succession planning um, and that on every front. And, and she's absolutely right. And I know we, we need, in both our parishes, to keep those conversations going uh, so that at every level, we can try and support one another and build up the Christian community. But of course, one of the things that I, I do find particularly difficult, and I, I really don't need to say much more than this, I don't think, is that when you start talking about succession planning with the clergy, well, all you've got to do is to step back and say, well, where are the clergy of the future? And therein lies the, the huge challenge. But nevertheless, we'll stay as peaceful as we can. We'll do what we can. We'll do as much sensible planning as we can. We'll listen to what the diocese is saying to us when we get the new pastoral plan at the beginning of Advent. And of course, we'll continue to take part in the synodal process, which is taking part across the whole of the Catholic Church throughout the world that uh, Pope Francis has called for. But in the more immediate present, there are lots of good things going in, in on, on in both the parishes. So I want to thank everybody for all the uh, initiatives that are being taken. Um, we're going to be moving on with some uh, further um, celebrations, uh, or, or at least opportunities, but so they will be celebrations for those who are suffering from dementia down at St. Mary's. We've taken lots of initiatives down there and they're going to continue next week. So keep an eye open for those. <coughs> um, and indeed, as you know, we began the, the new program for the uh, journey in faith. Um, and we ask God to continue to bless our, our efforts there. Uh, and here in Bishop Eaton, I've been thinking about the things that we might be able to do in the next few weeks. I hope next month that we will be able to dedicate this wonderful new icon. We think of Our Lady of Tenderness and how that's been a wonderful gift to the parish, um, particularly in, the, in view of the pandemic and all the suffering that we've experienced, the world has experienced, but to have that treasure in our church as a reminder to us of the gift of Mary, always there, also praying with us and for us. So these things are in my mind. Something else that's in my mind too is that we will perhaps um, find an opportunity to have some celebrations of the Sacrament of Reconciliation, um, perhaps once we get to Advent. I was thinking maybe a couple in each parish. I realize that um, in a way, we've suspended the Sacrament of Reconciliation, although I do remind you that we've said if you wish to receive this sacrament, uh, then just contact us personally or come and ring the front doorbell and we can nearly always find a priest for you. Um, but I just haven't felt it's the right moment to reinstate uh, reconciliation times. 
Um, but perhaps if we have a couple of uh, celebrations of reconciliation, much as we have done in the past, I'll get as many of the priests as possible to support us in that, um, and we can give you an opportunity to be at peace with the Lord as we build up towards Christmas. So those are various things going on in my own mind, and if you've got other ideas of things that we could and should be doing at the moment, please do let me know. Um, I did mention the web webcams a few weeks ago. Well, we're still working on those, uh, one or two little challenges in, in getting them through, but I, I won't go into that now. But hopefully, um, uh, don't, don't imagine that we've suspended the, the whole process. Uh, we haven't by any means, but uh, there are just uh, one or two uh, crucial things that need to be sorted out before we can actually get them installed. And then, uh, as you know, we've had a, a good number of funerals in recent times, and particularly here at Bishop Eaton. And once again, we've got three funerals coming up, so I'd like you to pray for the families and pray for the repose of the souls of those who've died. So uh, next Wednesday, the 3rd of November, we've got the funeral of Ashley Flynn. There's been a bit of a delay on that. It had to go to the coroner and so on, but nevertheless, uh, it's now all arranged. The following day, we're having the funeral of Dave Bamber. Um, Dave, who just died a few days ago. Uh, Dave actually wasn't a Catholic, but he loved the church. Uh, he loved particularly coming to the anointing services here. Um, I know he was very faithful at following these messages and the masses at home, when, even when he wasn't at all well. Um, so Dave, we have precious memories of you and we want to ask God's blessing on Joan and the family <coughs> at this time. Um, his daughter Jennifer's over from Canada, so we have tried to make sure that we can get the funeral as soon as possible and we have managed to get it for next Thursday on the 4th and it'll be at half past two in the afternoon. And then uh, moving into the following week, we have the funeral of Agatha Fleming, which will be on Tuesday the 9th. I did manage to get to Agatha. She was in a nursing home uh, down near Sefton Park, but I was called to her uh, a little while ago and was able to anoint her before she died. Um, on another rather happier front, in the sense that obviously we, we entrust all those who've died lovingly to the Lord, and hopefully they are happily with him now, um, but you remember uh, that Tim King was due to be ordained here as a priest. He was ordained here as a deacon. I actually missed that. I can't remember why I was away now. But, um, and then, of course, he, he, the pandemic came and he couldn't get across from Rome to be ordained. So he was actually ordained in Rome. But we're going to celebrate uh, his ordination on Monday week, on the 8th of November, with a mass here at half past six. There'll be a mass at lunchtime as well that day, so don't worry about that. Um, but it'll be lovely for those of you who know Tim, would like to come, the, the Focolare group obviously are going to be very much part of that. And we'll have a little reception, probably in the house afterwards, for those who, who wish to come. So we look forward to that celebration. This Sunday uh, is the transferred Feast of All Saints. Everybody's talking about Halloween again, which is, of course, the eve of All Saints. But uh, actually, All Saints is going to be on Halloween this year. It's going to be on Sunday because uh, in the old days, holidays of obligation were transferred back to the Sunday, so it's going to be that celebration. The Archbishop's prepared a pastoral letter, uh, which is very much on the focus of the meeting in Glasgow and our need to be concerned for the world, so we'll share that with you at the weekend uh, as well. Um, I think that's pretty well everything I wanted to share with you. Uh, so let's thank God for all the good things that are going on. Let's hope that the half term's going okay. Today's not a brilliant day weather-wise. Um, but I'm hoping later in the day to get across and visit Father Tony Hunt in Birkenhead. I did another test this morning. You'll be happy to know that I'm negative. Um, so hopefully that will all work out and I'll get a bit of a, a, an afternoon off anyway, get, jump on the buses and trains and do a bit of reading and, uh, and relax. Um, and I hope those of you who are on half term are also having a relaxing time in spite of the rather tricky weather at the moment. Let's pray God's blessing on our homes and families, let's pray for that peace which only he can give in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.